Hi, I'm Emma and welcome to the Research Lab. Today I'll be sharing three tips for writing scripts for user research or user testing sessions to help you get the most out of your efforts. The first tip is to include three session questions in your research script. Whether you're running remote or moderated sessions, it's important to ensure the participant is open and willing to provide feedback. Although observing behaviour is as important as verbal feedback, the magic really happens when the two combine. Therefore, pre-session questions help the participant ease into the session. They also help the participant understand we are interested in what they have to say. And finally, it helps to prime the participant for the task to come. If the research you're running is for a B2B business, ask about the company, their role and their day-to-day -day responsibilities. If it's B2C, find out about their typical habits in this space. For example, where do they usually shop or what are their main considerations when it comes to purchasing this type of product? This information will then be front and center in your participants' mind when they move through the tasks, which will increase the chances that they complete the tasks realistically with their genuine needs and considerations in mind. My next tip relates to how to write the tasks. My advice is to start broad and then get more specific. This is a good way to avoid all of the tasks being too prescriptive while also making sure you meet the specific research goals. Starting with a broad task gives the user a chance to explore the website as they would usually, albeit with a goal in mind. This will allow you to observe the natural user behavior. If you have specific areas of the website or pieces of functionality that you're interested in, you can firstly understand if the participant found or interacted with this area, page or functionality in the first place, which is interesting in itself. More specific tasks could then be tailored to the specific areas, pages or functionality that you're interested in. Here's an example. Perhaps you're specifically interested in the filter functionality on your e-commerce website. Your first task could be something like, you've arrived at this website looking for some new shirts to wear for work. Use the website to find something suitable for you. This gives the participant a clear goal, but is very open in terms of how the task could be completed. They might use the site search. They might navigate through the menu. They may or may not use the filters. If you're running moderated sessions, you can then ask questions to find out why they didn't use the filters. Maybe they didn't notice them, or maybe they didn't find useful filter options. The next task can get more specific. You're looking for a blue check shirt to wear for work. We still need to avoid outright telling the user what to do where possible, but giving a more specific goal, e.g. a color, increases the chance that they will filter and you will gather the insights that you're looking for. Something else I like to include is what I call an acquisition task. No one just arrives on your website out of nowhere. Even users who come to the site directly had some trigger to get there. Maybe a friend or family member told them about your brand. Perhaps they saw your advert on the side of a bus. Use your data from analytics to understand how users are arriving at your website and use this to inform your first task. For example, if the majority of your users arrive on your site from Google, set them a task to find the product you sell or service you offer from Google. It's pretty interesting to observe participants using the search results pages. Do they click on your paid or organic ad? Why? Ideally, participants should not know the brand the research is for at this early stage. So perhaps they click on a competitor site instead. And you can, again, find out why. Overall, this helps with framing and giving the participant context before they start interacting with your website. My final tip in writing an effective script for user testing sessions is to be really careful with the phrasing you use in your tasks, scenarios, and questions. The term user testing is problematic in some ways in itself, as it suggests there is a right or a wrong, a pass or a fail. If a user can't complete a task on your website, then that's on you. It's not necessarily the user's fault. It's pretty rare that a research participant will ever hear the term user testing, so we don't need to worry too much about that label, but we do need to apply the same logic to the script. Avoid using terms such as pretend, fake, or test. Oftentimes, we need to provide participants with dummy data to use to complete forms and checkout processes. But asking users to enter test at test.com, for example, can subconsciously impact users and affect subsequent tasks by putting undue pressure on them and causing them to change their behavior and their feedback. Using this method will also drastically reduce the amount of genuine insights you're going to uncover about the usability of your form or your checkout process. Intricate details will be lost. Firstly, because all of your participants will enter the same information, which would never happen in reality. And secondly, because you'll miss out on insights specific to that participant's information. Perhaps they have an unusual address that they often struggle to enter using address lookup tools. How does your website stack up? Maybe they misunderstand the required date of birth format. 
this is a tricky thing to avoid because we do need to be careful about collection of PII within user testing. But it's something to consider, especially if your research is focused on forms and checkout processes. Giving each participant a different set of made up information would potentially help to bridge this gap while still adhering to PII collection rules. No research method is an exact replication of reality. This is important to bear in mind when analyzing and presenting insights from any user research. This also highlights the importance of conducting a range of research methods and drawing on quant data to help get closer to the truth. As I've explained here today, there are subtle ways of ensuring the research we are conducting, in this case user testing, is done as effectively as possible, ultimately meaning we can be more confident in our insights. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Research Lab. Happy researching!